Welcome back and uh, thank you for staying with us. Uh, this is Daybreak in case you're just uh, joining us. And uh, we told you that we are going to be having part of the conversation that we have lined up for you this morning is on alcohol and uh, drug abuse in the country. We have quite a number of interesting numbers that we'll be taking you through shortly. And we also have experts in studio who will be helping us break down those numbers and what they mean for the country and the strategies that have been put in place to tame the crisis in the country. And this comes in the wake of a lot of concern mm. from our leaders concerning um, how this problem has affected several parts of the country, specifically the central part of Kenya. The latest uh, news was uh, during a meeting, a tour there by uh, the leadership of the <coughs> country where the deputy president, Rigadi Gashagua, made some remarks concerning how to go about licensing of bars and res restaurants in the region as part of the, uh, you know, uh, measures that ought to be put in place to tame the crisis in the country. But it's not just in central, mm -hmm. I believe, in a majority of homes, yeah. in a majority of families, this is something that is, we can say for lack of a better term, can be ranked as the second cancer in the homes today. And more or less the yeah. compounding effect is as hard and we'll be looking at the counties in terms of the numbers, the abuse amongst secondary school learners, primary school learners, general workforce in the workplace and also the general population and that will be coming up shortly on um, the uh, Super Bowl. But first let's take the account of the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the National Authority for the Campaign Against Alcohol and Drug Abuse, that is Victor Okema. Good morning. Thanks for your time and company. Ethabita Mutinda is nominated senator. <clears throat> Thank you for making time for the broadcast. And Eric Njuguna will be joining us shortly, who is a psychiatrist. And um, since this is an involvement of also the family and other players who need to be acting on some of the policies that are often recommended. And CEO, may I start with you? Looking at your numbers and um, of uh, the report you presented in parliament of uh, the findings between the 1st of January to June 30th, 2021, 4.9 million Kenyans, that is a representation of about 18.2%, have used at least one substance or abused one substance. The numbers are mind-boggling, isn't it? What's the address to this very glaring problem? <clears throat> Thank you very much for the opportunity to, uh, to speak to Kenyans on this uh, a very uh, disturbing uh, uh, problem in the country. Uh, and I must say from the onset that uh, the pronouncements you are seeing uh, uh, on media from the top leadership actually is a statement about how serious the problem is in the country. Uh, and you are talking about those figures. Uh, I want to say that uh, as an authority, we carry out a survey every uh, five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the figures you are quoting are figures uh, for the 2017 uh, survey. We are shortly going to be releasing the survey for 2022, and, the, and I can tell you the situation is not any better. Uh, so from where I sit, we have a problem. It's a growing problem, and uh, it is a problem that Kenyans really need to focus on and start to think about how best we can deal with it. Mm. It's not a problem that can be left to an institution of government. It's a problem that all Kenyans must face and, and deal with. So the figure you are talking about, one, 12 point, uh, I mean 18 point uh, percent of one who has used once in a while, mm. uh, when you come to current use, you will also be shocked. It's a, it's a big number. If you even proceed to think about how many people have been affected by that usage, then you start to see how serious the problem is. And I'm glad you're saying that uh you're just about to release the, the, the 2022 um, you know, report for us to get a clear picture of the latest, uh, uh, you know, where we are at as a country. But what, what, what uh, you know, really is unfortunate, Mishimua, maybe just to rope you in on this, is the fact that he's saying that it's highly likely that things are not going to get better, that we could just be probably looking at different numbers that maybe have gone higher uh, once the report is released. From where you sit, how do you describe this crisis? What are we looking at if you just as assess what is happening, especially to our young people? Why should we sit down and have a serious conversation about alcoholism and drug abuse in the country? <clears throat> Let me start by saying thank you for having me today. And uh, from where we sit, it's a very sad, uh, sad state uh, for 
our youths uh, because uh, the issue of uh, the drug and the alcohol abuse is uh, the bigger percentage is with our youths and uh, there are many contributing factors because you look at statistics you find that uh, the age factor has actually gone down between age 9 to 10 is where the cases of alcohol and drug abuse are actually starting from. And whereby the laws in our country indicate that age 18 and above is, is where alcohol is allowed. But you find that currently uh, the age below 18 and actually as low as 9 years is where our young children, our, 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 our youths have actually uh, indulged uh, so much into. Uh, where we are uh, as, as a country, you find that uh, we are at an eastern region whereby we are connecting to other eastern African countries and uh, Nairobi also being a city this is where the, the, the businesses are done and most of these um, drug issues alcohol everything is just passing within the city and within the surroundings so it is it is us uh, uh, as, as uh, legislators to actually uh, put measures from from the institutions of from the learning institutions that the schools uh, and and from where I see it, case example we have uh, uh, the curriculum and we have units or subjects like uh, the social studies it is the high time that the Ministry of Education actually comes and structures a subject a topic that talks about drugs and and alcoholism the same way we used to have or we still have home science as a, as a, as a subject and we're still learning about adolescence issues and we still learning we should actually be learning you know about early pregnancies and all that so as far as drug and, and alcohol is concerned uh, from where I see it then this actually should be introduced to our learning institutions at a very um, early time I know also there are other factors that are really contributing to this uh, when you talk about uh, the, the family setup the, the way we are actually uh, bringing our kids how are they able to access uh, these drugs are they able to access uh, this uh, these drinks what also it's one thing to access it's another as to why what makes them you know indulge in this knowing very well even at their age they are not actually adult so those are the things we should talk about one as parents two also as leaders openly to our, to our kids giving them also the, the right directions mm -hmm. maybe uh, you see so you can you can, you can I, got, I, I actually want to uh, uh, chip in to what she's saying and i agree with her totally that um, we we need to speak these things out to, uh, to the young people as early as possible and uh, you asked uh, where, where, what what happened and I and I have been asked this question before and I say you see uh, if you talk to our parents they will tell you alcohol or drugs were only meant for people who have a certain age and uh, they were also for a purpose people could not just drink uh, for the sake of it they drank because there was a matter in the village to discuss and therefore elders came together and uh, there was a, a alcohol to be taken for that purpose right now when you look at the the, the situation currently and i agree with her uh, in fact the, if you look at the survey we did on uh, drugs in school in primary schools Actually, the, the, the youngest person who has been initiated is four years. Four years? Four years. And the average is 11. Uh, at 11, people have been initiated into this uh, problem. And the question is, how do they get initiated? Mm -hmm. They get initiated by uh, us parents. Mm -hmm. and, and the facts are there. Uh, they get initiated by those uh, who are uh, our peers, the people we influence us. And uh, I am yet to find a, a more influential person in the life of a child other than the parent. So what we do is we go out there and as we take our uh, task or whatever stuff we like taking, uh, you, the children are playing around there and see what parents are doing. So uh, in the process, they also test. So this is where the problem has gone. So that uh, as you go forward, you see more and more young people initiated in the drugs. And uh, in our institution now, it's uh, like you are taking a substance, if you are not, then you are not cool, mm -hmm. right? This is the conversation we need to have. And if you ask me, the parents, I become a risk factor 
in the sense of being a protective factor. Mm -hmm. And th the question now we should be asking <coughs> as parents, how, how do we address this problem? We are at risk because we have these uh, dr drinks in the house. We have uh, these drinks when we were doing parties. So it's cool to you know, take uh, when there is something to celebrate, celebrate it with alcohol. So the children grow to know this is the way we should go. Okay. I, I think that's where the problem is. And whilst you mentioned the institution of uh, parenting, which is key, and we'll discuss that, I want us to look at the administrative action that the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa recently called for while speaking in the county of Moranga. And as per your report, which you presented. Uh, to Parliament, I'm looking at uh, the illicit alcohol seizures by county, and allow me to just quantify the amount of litres that uh, were seized. Kisi County leads the way with about 355,000 litres of illicit alcohol. Nyamira follows with about 152,000 litres. Then we have Kericho, 150,000, Siaya, 148,000, Narok, 125,000. Then you have Elgeo, Maraquet, about 115, Mombasa County, about 110, Nandi, Migori, Wasingishu, Baringo, Nakuru, Nairobi, Meru, Transzoia, in that order. It, it seems this will take the attention away from the call by the Deputy President to these counties that are not in central Kenya, but appear to be in the red zone when it comes to illicit brew and alcohol abuse? Well, uh, let me say that I, I think that the, the, the Deputy President is looking at the problem from his background. And uh, if you ask the other leaders, they will say, say the same thing. Uh, the problem of alcohol and drug abuse in the country is actually widespread. I can't tell, I can't tell you which region is safe. Uh, it is a problem that actually, in the spirit of the debut president, the people need to sit down. Leaders need to sit down and discuss it. If you looked at the entire, and uh, you know when you report, uh, the, our, our report to parliament is, I think, after every six months. Yeah. Right? And if you looked at the, what we have seen over the, in one year, then the figures might even change, and you might find the problem is even going to be more in Western Kenya because I, I have the, those kind of facts. Now, there is, and uh, the regions have also their own peculiar drugs that are common, right? If you're talking about Chang'e, you find it more in Western, you find more in, uh, in, in, uh, in Kisi, in Yamira, the one you're talking about, and I happen to come from that neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> I come from Yamira, so I know. If you are talking about uh, uh, the cannabis, right? You would find it so widespread in areas like in central Kenya, all right? And the reason is that the trafficking of the bangi comes actually from Ethiopia. Yeah. And that border has become a very problem problematic source of the drugs that are being abused all the way from uh, Moyale coming through to Isiolo and they, you know, penetrate central Kenya, Nairobi and uh, all the way to Mombasa and end up in uh, Somalia. We have even tracked this. Uh, and the reason why they go to Somalia, well, you can only guess. Um, and there is also quite a substantial amount of uh, cannabis that comes from Uganda and Tanzania, mm -hmm. right? So every region has its own peculiar problems. If you go to, to, to the coast, then you start seeing the problem of cocaine, the problem of heroin, and a, a lot of uh, their local stuff there. Generally, there is no region that is safe, I can tell you. We, we, we used to think that uh, Northeastern is uh, actually a, a, a safer uh, you know, region in terms of drug abuse. Okay, but, but Mr. Okay, just to pose you, as uh, the man who sits at the office of the chief executive officer, you seem to be understanding the problem. But what is the diagnosis, making an admission of the porous borders that you talked about, the regions that are leading in terms of the abuse, what's the address, how do you address that, having admitted the, diagno having made a diagnosis of the problem? Okay, uh, and I'm asked this question many times. In fact, uh, when people see, uh, you know, uh, seizures of this nature, they say, uh, where is the authority when, when this is happening? I think the best way to look at the authority is that it will do, carry out this service and we share with Kenyans, right? The f we have placed the facts there. 
we carry out even more specific surveys looking at the workplace, drug situation in workplaces, and we report. We do surveys on primary school, the situation, the status, and, and share. We expect that with this information, it should inform and trigger action by the relevant institutions. If it's in schools, how is the Board of Management addressing this issue, right? If it is uh, in the workplace, what mechanisms have been put in place in, in workplaces to address the drug issues in the workplace? And we engage them by sharing this information. So the action to this problem, mm -hmm. is, uh, it requires everybody. Right? We tell parents you, from our survey you are a risk factor. Right? We share. We go to the church. We go to the, even the board of management, meet parents in various clusters, and they share these facts and tell them you are a risk factor. You expect that trigger action by the parents to really look at their own ways. And let me also say this drug control and licensing of liquor is actually a default function. And I, I, when I say this, I, I want the senator to actually get this message, that this function is devolved. Mm. The question should be, if you do an audit of what counties have done, how much have they done in terms of research, in terms of uh, you know, creating awareness among their own people, in terms of investing in rehabilitation, in terms of uh, you know, uh, various mitigations against this, in terms of enforcement, right? How many members are they licensing, and where are they licensing, and what are they licensing? Okay. These are issues that actually need to be addressed. So what do you want to say, what has Nakata done? Mm. Nakata will share with you the information we carry out through our research, Thank you. you know? And when we share this information, we expect action by those affected. What if that action is not taken? Beyond expecting, what is the space that NACADA then occupies? Because I believe there's a lot of investment that goes into doing this survey. There's, there's a lot of time and even expertise that, that you, you all are uh, you know, deeply sunk into when you're trying to, do, to paint a picture of what is happening in the country. In the event that no action is taken, what do you do next? Oh, by the way, that's, a, that's an important question. And uh, sometimes we have been told uh, we have become like uh, pastors who just preach. All uh, right? But uh, so really what, one of the things is we get frustrated. When you have shared the facts and you, that doesn't trigger action, we get frustrated as an authority. But we engage. And I think that is one area where we have uh, really tried to put our energy, right? We engage with counties, and I can tell you the engagement has borne results. Where we have had the engagement, we have had even some counties that we have seen them invest in uh, public education and awareness programs. We have seen counties, I can count up to 10, okay. that have actually put up rehabilitation facilities out of that engagement. We have had a lot of engagement with the church. You know, we have actually partnership arrangements with a number of charge umbrella charge organizations. And through them, they, we, we, are, they, we are able to see them speak about these things in their platforms in the, among their people. And that is the way to go. We continue to engage. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. S Senator, uh, from, yeah. from where you sit, I mean, uh, how do we work out a, a plan? He is talking about a multi-sectoral approach into this crisis, that it is not just the work of NACADA, it, it involves quite a number of institutions and people. How does that then work, you know, from where you sit to improve? Because we seem to be getting numbers that are going higher each and every year. The situation keeps getting worse each and every year, despite the budgetary allocation, despite the efforts that have been put in place to tame this crisis. Seems like we're not... Um, you know, making any progress. Where are we failing? Let me start uh, a, a bit, a bit uh, on the other side eh? and ask the question, is uh, alcohol illegal in Kenya? It is not illegal. What we are discussing mm. is the abuse element of it. Because taking two bottles or three, uh, is, is it an abuse? No, it's, it's, it's what is allowed. It's, it's, it's there, it's, it's not illegal. But the discussion is the abuse uh, uh, a part of it. And when, uh, when uh, uh, he, uh, he 
talks, he talks about what they've done. They've done the service. What is the mandate of NACADA? Okay, is to to educate, to to give awareness, to give to to give the parliament information. Yes, there's the question of what happens. Uh, uh, with that information. A Senate, yes, we oversight the counties. Uh, in each every, and every county has uh, the docket on uh, the uh, alcohol uh, uh, department, which they normally go to each and every bars and doing uh, licensing depending on uh, what is required and all the requirements. I would say the, the, the issue of corruption has also contributed to these issues because you find that uh, there are those bars that are being licensed and looking at their locations and all that that is not correct. So partly uh, you find that the issue of corruption is also contributing to this uh, 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 abuse uh, that is there. And if, when we've, we started, we talked about the age factor that has gotten involved into the abuse. It is the younger generation. So as they are growing up, as they are getting into teenagehood, it becomes too much to be able to, to remove uh, that from them, from their system. And, and backwards, it becomes um, a, a, a chain. Uh, so, uh, one, there should be very strict measures. And as, as I said, I started by the education factor in our schools. That curriculum should be implemented by the Ministry of Education. A portion of it in the social, social uh, unit studies. And also back to the uh, uh, authorities. The authorities should uh, look at this issue not as, as a money-making issue, whereby uh, today this, this uh, bar is operating in this particular area and it is okay. You saw the other day our governor, Nairobi, uh, came in, you know, and talked about he, uh, no bars within uh, the residential areas. Mm -hmm. The question, uh, there's the question of, there's the business perspective, or like we're losing our businesses, we're not able to operate, look at the economies. But the, there's also the bigger picture of our society. Who are we killing? We are killing our generation. Okay. And, and, and uh, you find that mostly the, the market uh, for the uh, bars that are within the residential area, the market are our youths. Why? Because this youth is able to move from their house to just this uh, adjacent bar, which is just around the corner, and like going so far where the parent will question, like, like, where are you? How far are you? And they'll just, just go around the corner, do their stuff, enjoy themselves, and, and, and still come back. So it is an involvement of, of, of different government institutions. NACADA cannot just do it alone. But they need to extend asking that uh, uh, education come in and let us do this. Mm -hmm. uh, the police come in, let us do This is the way to do it. The county governments, let's come in and do it. So in their report, they should be reporting and also uh, 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 working together collectively with these different organizations to be able to uh, execute these particular solutions. Thank you. Uh, when we get back from the break, Senator and uh, Victor, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, NACADA, will be taking a look at the abuse amongst primary school goers and secondary school goers. And in your recommendations, you also call for collaborative efforts at the school level, at the community level, at the workplace level, and the need for the intertwining of uh, the same. The hashtag on Twitter is Daybreak. The SMS code is double two four double two at Citizen TV Kenya, at Ayub Abdikadir, and at Safin underscore Cheng. We continue with the discussion after the break. Stay tuned.